Welcome to this live demonstration of SAP Business One. My name's Richard Duffy. I am the SAP Business One product evangelist. And on behalf of the entire SAP team and our partners, I'd like to thank you for taking time to join us today. I'm gonna to take you through the inventory functionality in SAP Business One and show you for those kinds of businesses who are managing inventory on a daily basis, how SAP Business One can really help you streamline those processes. In addition, I'm also gonna show you how you can use the inventory functionality even if you don't stock products and how you can take advantage of that functionality, for example, if you're selling services. So let's go and have a look at exactly how it works. So within the inventory management module of SAP Business One, there is a couple of key things, uh, a couple of key areas of functionality that you need to be aware of. First thing though, I think it's important to get a bit of an understanding of what uh, you are recording in the system when it comes to your inventory master data. So as you might have seen in some of the other demos that uh, are available for you on this site, there is a very, very specific way that we lay out the master data in SAP Business One. And with the inventory, it's really no different. We've tried to make the screens as clean, as crisp, and as easy for you to use as possible. So right now when I go into inventory in the first instance into the item master data, it always brings me up in find mode. I'm gonna to navigate to my very first product and we'll take a look and see what we've got here. So this is my IBM InfoPrint 1312 because my sample data company is a company that specializes in um, the sales and implementation of IT equipment. So my IBM InfoPrint 1312 is my product. I've got my item number there, which is an A00001. I can also record a barcode because with SAP Business One, uh, we can utilize barcodes right throughout the entire system. I can put in a description. I can have descriptions in foreign languages. I'm able to group my products together by the item type. I'm also able to put my items in different product groups. What this enables me to do is set all of these parameters that are in the particular product uh, and have those parameters be able to be changed en masse. So uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that when we look at the setting up of the item groups. But uh, I can specify then with a product, whether or not it's an item that I keep in stock. So that's why I've ticked the inventory item here. So I do wanna physically track the stock. Is it a sales item? Is it a product that I wanna be able to sell? Is it a product that I wanna be able to purchase through my purchasing function? So that again is the reason for having um, this purchase item option there ticked. Then I'm also able to specify the price list that I want to use as the, um, the main price for this particular product and also the unit price. I can specify then which of my manufacturers is the, the manufacturer that I buy or that I uh, source this product from. I can specify a shipping type for this product and then I'm also able to specify when I first set the product up if there are serial numbers and batch numbers to be managed. So one of the things you'll notice, matter of fact, when I try and change that, uh, that manage item by because I'm in an existing item, you'll see there's a little error message comes up down the bottom in red and it's telling me that I can only modify that setting when the quantity is zero and I'm not managing serial or batch numbers. So important point to note is that SAP Business One does stop you from doing those things which are gonna cause problems in the system. Um, but the point there is I can manage items by serial number and also by batch number. I'm able to specify which supplier I want to purchase this product from. I can put in a manufacturer's catalog number. Now the great thing with all of these different things that I can put in here in my purchasing and for the same token in my sales uh, data is when I'm entering a purchase order, I can use the supplier's catalog number to enter my purchase order. And when I'm doing a sales order, I'm selling product, I can use the customer's version of the inventory item code to process the sales order. So again, we're giving you that flexibility. 
I'm also able to, uh, again, against the sales data, I can track uh, a selling unit of measure. So for example, I could buy this product in boxes and a box may contain 12 individual units. Then I might want to sell them in a six pack. So I can then specify that my sales unit of measure is a six pack and that my number of items per sales unit here is six. So there's a lot of different flexibility there around that. My inventory, I can control what valuation method I want to use. Do I want to use uh, standard cost? Do I want to use last in, first out? Do I want to use moving average? Again, I set those the very first time. Once I've started entering transactions, I can't change that, but that's the standard way that most uh, software works when it comes to managing your inventory costing. I'm also able to specify as many different warehouses as I want to track stock levels of this product in those warehouses. And of course, once I've got all those different warehouses, I can do inventory transfers between them. What some organizations even do is they use that inventory warehouse functionality for tracking service vans that they have on the road. So they might have you know, multiple service or delivery vans and each delivery van has its own warehouse number. At any point in time, that means that you can go to that inventory van and you can run a stock take. You can see the value of the stock in that inventory van. And then of course, using all the inventory transactions that I'm gonna show you in a minute, you can even transfer stock backwards and forwards between all of those different locations and track all of the underlying accounting transactions that are created by those inventory movements. So uh, I'm also able to specify a planning method. With SAP Business One, not only do we have the inventory functionality we're looking at here, we also have the material requirements planning or MRP functionality. What does this enable you to do? This enables you to um, do additional forecasting and then start doing your purchasing, taking that forecasting into consideration. But I'm gonna show you that in a separate demonstration. I can specify my procurement method. Is this a product I buy or is it a product that I make? Because also within SAP Business One, we have the production capability and we're gonna take a look at that. I have the ability to record lead time and then I've got the the capability here to specify additional item properties like style, size, color. Um, there's up to, as you can see, 64 of those item properties that I can specify. You know, is it available in red, blue, uh, whatever the case may be. So you've got a lot of flexibility there. And of course, uh, you can, if you want to, you can record uh, pictures of your products in the item master data. So why am I showing you that item master data setup? I think it's really helpful to understand exactly how much flexibility you do have when you are configuring a product item within SAP Business One. So once you've got your items in there, there's a couple of things that you can also do. You can also create multiple price lists. And you can see here is the price list functionality. The very first step in a price creating a price list is you define a base price. So your first price list is based on your base price. And then you create multiple price lists, not only based on that base price, but also you can put in quantity breaks and you can even create customer specific price lists. So here, for example, are some of my standard price lists. So I've got a base price, which is the base price multiplied by a factor of one. So just the standard base price. Then I might have a discount purchase price, which is the base price multiplied by a factor of 0.5. So effectively a 50% discount. Here I've got a 75% discount. Here I've got my distributor um, sales price. So this is a 1.25% factor. So this is cost plus 25%. My regular sales price, 1.5, so cost plus 50%, and so on. And you can have as many of these different price lists as you want, and then specify which price you purchase at, and which price you're going to sell at. Now, as I mentioned, any one of these price lists, all I have to do 
is double click on that price list and it gives me the ability then to set a specific price for a specific product on that price list. When I am looking at this, uh, you can see all of my products in the price list. I'm able to go in and override that unit price. Once the price lists are set, I'm also able to go in here and set period and volume discounts. So I pick my price list, for example, here's my small account sales price. Then I can call up the product and say for the IBM InfoPrint 1312, and I double click on here, you'll see that I can put in that when I'm selling between this date and let's say the end of June, on this price list, I'm going to give an additional 5% discount. So then that recalculates my price and then I say update and that's now done. So it makes it very, very easy for you to set up all of those different discount structures according to um, you know, the parameters that you define, like the, like the period of time, uh, like uh, for example, you can even set the quantity. So simply by double clicking on that period of time, I can also add an additional discount. For example, let's say I don't want to give a percentage discount during the period of time, so I can update that, but I do want to give a quantity break. So I can say if they buy up to 10, I'm going to give them 5%. If they then buy up to 20, I'm going to give them 7%. And then anything more than that, I can then apply in another discount as well. In that case, I'm just going to say that's it. I'm happy with that, uh, with that pricing structure. I'll say update again and add that. And that's now done. So that's how we can quickly and easily configure the price lists that are available. Now, again, I'm able to create special prices for a business partner. So I can go in here and say, for this particular business partner, Earthshaker Corporation, when they buy my IBM InfoPrint, then they are going to get the small account sales price less 2.5%. Okay, so they're gonna pay $682.50, or I can even go in here and manually put in the price, and it will reverse calculate what the percentage discount is that they're going to get for that. I'm also then able to put in, for that specific business partner, a specific price for a range of dates, just as we saw before that I could do for the whole product. And then of course, from here, I am able to then also specify my quantity breaks. So the standard price list functionality I can incorporate, but I'm now creating a special price just for this one customer. So if you've got contract pricing, that functionality will help you address that requirement. So that's the pricing. Now, once I've got all of that information in there, it makes it very, very easy to then manage and maintain all of those prices. You have the ability to copy special prices from one customer to another customer or from one customer to a range of customers, a whole bunch of different ways that you can automate that um, price updating process. You can update your special prices globally. So you can say, on all products that meet this criteria, I wanna increase this price by 3% or I wanna decrease it by 5% or whatever the case may be. So we're giving you uh, a lot of flexibility there around how that works. So you can do your change prices and so on. A Couple of other things that I'd like to quickly show you in inventory as well, without getting into you know, too much of the nitty gritty of exactly how all of these transactions work. Um, but you know, the process involved in managing your inventory items is very, very simple. For example, you can uh, very, very quickly and easily 
transfer inventory from one warehouse to another. So I can go in here and I can say, I want to transfer product from warehouse one, and I can specify what cost I want to transfer the product out at, pick my product, it's my IBM InfoPrint 1312, and I'll say, I want to transfer that to warehouse two. How many do I want to transfer out? I want to transfer out, uh, let's see. By going control tab, it brings up all of the, uh, the warehouses. So I can see I've got 948 available in warehouse one, and I've got 50 in warehouse two. So I want to move out probably 100. So I'm going to choose that I want to move out 100. And that's that. So now I'll just say add. And that's now done. I've now moved my inventory from warehouse one to warehouse two. So the transactions are very, very easy to process. Now, one way that some people also use the warehouses and this concept of inventory transfers is if you sell product on consignment to your customers or through your customers. So uh, instead of invoicing the customer when you send the goods to them, you only invoice them when the goods are sold. So what a lot of people do is they use that inventory transfer, they set the customer up as another warehouse and when they're moving the inventory across to the customer on consignment, they can um, just specify that that is the, where, the, the two warehouse that they're using. And then of course, all the underlying accounting transactions kick in as well to give you the ability to track how much inventory you've got sitting in your balance sheet that's actually out with your customers on consignment. So managing that process is very, very easy with SAP Business One as well. Few other things that you can do within SAP Business One is you do have the ability to do your cycle counts. So you can do your stock takes. You can specify a particular warehouse that you want to do your stock take for, and then you generate your inventory count list. You go through, you do your physical inventory count, you record that physical inventory count into SAP Business One, and then the automatic transactions which do the adjustments will be processed for you. A number of other different things that you can do as well, recurring transactions which occur right throughout the entire system. You are also able to go through and do inventory revaluations. A little bit more complex than what I wanted to cover in a standard product demonstration such as this, but this gives you the ability to go through and recalculate the value of your inventory if you're using a more um, complex inventory valuation method. As far as the reports that are available for you within your inventory, there is a full range of reports covering things as simple as items listings, right through to customer specific price lists, through to inventory audit reports, which show you all the transactions and all the movements that have occurred on your inventory. If you're operating in an industry that has high inventory turnover, but low inventory margin, you'll know how important it is to have complete visibility over all the transactions that are occurring in your warehouse and to see where you have issues that are impacting on your profitability. And the inventory audit report, for example, gives you the ability to do that. So I'm able to go and generate my inventory audit report and I can pick any one of my products and drill down and see every single transaction that occurred. I had an opening balance, for example. I had um, you know, products coming in, products going out. So I can see every single transaction that occurs and then how that impacts on my current stock level and also how that then implements uh, or impacts rather on my current stock value. And then of course, not only can I view that on screen, but with a single click, I'm able to go and generate that report out into uh, a printed report format as well. So again, that's one of the things that I've mentioned in some of the other demonstrations that really differentiates SAP Business One is the ability to give you the information and give you the ability to drill down on the screen first and then decide 
now I do want to generate a report rather than having to produce everything in reports and go through reams and reams of reports to try and track the information that you're looking for. So that's an overview of the inventory management functionality that's in SAP Business One. Again, as I mentioned, we also have the capability to manage serial numbers and batch numbers as well. So you can view all of the transactions that occur on a particular serial numbered item. You have multiple transactions that you can run to help you update those serial numbers. Plus, you're also able to quickly and easily call up a serial numbered item and see exactly what happened with that serial numbered item. When did it come into your warehouse? When you sold it? Who you sold it to? If there is a manufacturer's warranty that's applicable? And so on. So you can see that there is a whole range of uh, information that you're able to track against the product. Now, do you have to track every single one of those uh, pieces of information? Well, as you can plainly see from the existing data that I've got, no, you don't. But it's really a matter of you deciding what makes sense for you and your business process. Again, with Business One, what we're doing is giving you the base pre-configured functionality uh, and then giving you the flexibility to be able to um, use the software in a way that matches through to that business process that you've defined. So that's the overview of the inventory. If you've got any questions, you'll see that there is the button at the bottom of the screen which says, ask a question. Please feel free to click on that button if you've got any questions you wanna ask and one of our team will be more than happy to get back to you with an answer.